What's up gamers, Koobs here. We're gonna jump right into the middle of an invasion. A blue has just joined the battle and we are low on resources. So naturally you can guess what's gonna happen next. This is Carrie and Gary. He's my level 88 intelligence based invader. We're facing off against this wonderful host. It goes by the name of I Don't Care. And I have a sneaking suspicion that deep down they do care. We'll see them switch to a different weapon set very soon here. But in the background, I'd like you to notice that we've been joined by a fellow Bloody Finger, a co invader. And this video is going to be about co invading, being a good co invader, and also about managing expectations. I talk about managing expectations. I had an expectation that the Share Factory was going to properly record my audio for this first bit of the video. But for some reason it didn't, and so I'm back here again doing this um, bit of commentary. I probably said some really great things the first time around, but now I'm saying different things, and so the video has changed entirely in some sense. But here, again, we have our co-invader. It took them strange amount of time to arrive to the scene of the action and naturally I breathe a sigh of relief when I see that a fellow invader has joined in our excursion. I like invading with somebody else. It makes things fun for me. And um, when we have a co-invader, you know, it's like they're, they're relieving you from your shift at work. And you know, sometimes there's a few things that you have to, you know, do before you can really get out of there and go home. But for the most part, you know, like, hey, I can kind of hand things over to somebody who's who's got this. You might have noticed the uh, co-invader there. They took a backstab pretty early on, and um, I tried to help them. You know, I made sure that the host couldn't uh, punish them on, on their wake up after the backstab. But they have resorted to throwing daggers at the host from a distance. Um, not sure if maybe they ran out of their flasks already, just ill-prepared, or if this is just some sort of new technique that I'm um, not privy to yet. Now, I'm not here to judge this fellow invader. They, they got stabbed in the back, and so maybe that made them a little bit shy and timid. But backstabs happen. It's Part of the process, you know. We all get backstabbed sometimes. There's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, you son of a bitch. Well, alright, fine. You can notice that they had time to do a full point down before the fellow invader did any damage to them with their arrows from the bushes. And so, we have to manage our expectations sometimes. If you don't have expectations, then you can't be disappointed, I think is the saying. And so, with that in mind, don't have expectations that your co-invader is going to be a good co-invader. They might not be. But maybe, if they've watched this video, or they've watched any other videos about doing invasions successfully with another invader, they could learn a thing or two about the dance, the tango, that occurs when doing a co-invasion. You might have seen I walked up this hill and it was like the phantom was waiting for me. They were, they were like, oh hey, now I get to fight somebody. That's good for him. I'm not going to abide by their rules, though. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I would want a co-invader to do for me, which is to relieve me a little bit from the fighting that I've been doing. Give me a just a brief moment of respite, catch my breath, maybe use a flask if I need to. So that's what I tried to do, run over and put a little bit of pressure on the host so that my co-invader could get just a little breath for dispatching the phantom swiftly. But now you might notice um, I have a lot of respect for this host here and for all hosts who opt to use the taunter's tongue. I think that they're they're great. They're wonderful. They, they make co-invasions possible for us in Elden Ring and so there's a certain level of respect that I have for you as a gamer if you choose to do that. I also, Carrie and Gary, is a fan of the Lucerne, and so I respect the host for being a Lucerne enjoyer. So the tango, the dance that happens when co-invading, there's uh, 
there's something to be very aware of, and that's that you can hit each other. If that's news to you, you're welcome, that tip is free. But you can hit one another when you're co-invading, and so you want to be careful not to um, cause bodily injury to your co-invader. And so you might notice that sometimes if, if one person is attacking the host, then the other person can kind of fall back and wait for their opportunity to attack the host. And then back and forth they go. And between the two invaders, they can apply a sufficient amount of pressure to take out the host properly. Now that we notice that a hunter has been called to rescue, to join in, in this battle, what do we know about hunters? We don't have expectations for them. Oftentimes, they're just away from their controller. <laughs> They don't even know that they've been invited to the invasion. And so this poor host is still stuck in a two-on-one. Now, being a good co-invader, it takes time, it takes practice, and it takes a little bit of skill and some knowledge of the game. But I think that the biggest thing is trying to find the rhythm of the fight and identifying your opportunities of when you can, when you can make your attack. Um, also, just having some basic awareness, recognizing what the fellow invader is using, what weapons they're using, how they're attacking. Are they using uh, area of effect spells? Things like this. Why is that important for me as an invader? Well, because I can't control the other person who's invading with me, but I, I can control myself and, and my character. And so if I notice that they're using a big heavy weapon, then maybe I try to distance myself when they're attacking. I could also try to switch to something that's a little bit more close quarters, maybe a shorter spear, maybe use a, a, a straight sword or a curved sword even, something that's not going to be um, too damaging to people nearby me other than the target that I'm actually trying to hit. So these are just small things to think about when you have a co-invader with you. And also, it's not any one person's invasion. We are now a team, and so it's a team victory. You've reached the end of the line. Just give up. Your phantom has abandoned you. There's no hope. You might as well just walk back to the side of grace. Actually, just throw yourself off the cliffside. Because your host, or your phantom, you are the host. Your phantom will never get here in time for my vengeance. <sighs> what happens? What happens when, when they say you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain? Well, what happens when you never die? Huh? What happens if you never die? Seems inevitable to me. I think this is becoming stupid. Maybe the montage would be better without commentary. Who knows? We'll see after I'm done recording this audio. Parry. Critical. What's gonna happen here? Combo. Parry. Critical. It's all that we do. We wake up. We parry. We land the critical. And we go to bed. And we do it all again. Parry. Critical. Parry. Critical. Every day. Day in and day out. I'm tired. I'm tired. I just want to go home. I just want to get some sleep. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. I watched it happen to General Radon. I watched it happen to Godfrey before him. Even my own brother, Moongrum. When will it happen to me? It seems like my time is running short. Well, until then, I'll remain carrying Gary. The hero that we all need, but that none of us deserve. Shout out to you, carrying Gary. <laughs> Hopefully that was fun. It was fun for me to record, so it's staying in the video. Thanks for being here, and thanks for watching the video. 
and if you've checked out any of the other videos that I've um, been posting recently, thanks for watching those too. I really appreciate you, and I think that you're awesome. So hopefully you've been getting maybe a laugh, or maybe you've picked up a couple of tips from these videos. I really, you know, I've learned a lot about invasions from watching other invaders, and so having um, kind of this passion for um, making videos as a hobby, something that I really like to do for fun, and um, being able to kind of um, use it to maybe help other people in their invasion journey, maybe encourage them to go out there and invade, or encourage them to just kind of practice in order to get better, or, you know, just encourage them to keep moving in the direction that they're moving in their life. Hopefully it's a positive direction. And you know, and reminding people that you're worth it. You know, you matter. And you'll always matter here. So, thanks for being here, Internet Stranger. I appreciate you. Let's get back to some uh, co-invading experience. So, you might notice here, again, talking about that little bit of a tango that happens. The, the um, fellow invader and I, we have been... Ba ba probably about 20 minutes in this invasion together. We started all the way back by the Draconic Tree Sentinel fighting the host and his phantom. We took out the phantom together, and then we made the long trek all the way back here to this merchant's site of grace. I think that the host was trying to summon in their, their phantom again, but I think what happened was that they um, <laughs> ended up <laughs> summoning a hunter. And so the hunter came in, and so we, we go up there, we're doing a little bit of a two-on-one, the hunter shows up, and my co-invader knows to like kind of peel off and take on the hunter. And they were able to, I think, kind of like force the hunter off of the ledge there, so they were no longer a threat, at least for the time being. And then we're able to, you know, tag team the host, and through some calculated strategy, we're able to overcome and achieve victory. And so that felt great, you know, these sorts of experiences where you have a fellow um, invader with you. It's like, it's not just you now that is is relishing in this uh, this sweet victory that you guys can achieve. It's like you have somebody to celebrate with. And I, I think that that's such a wonderful, you know, part of this experience. I really enjoy having in invasions with, with, uh, with a partner in crime, if you will. And so again, just a shout out to all the hosts that are running the Taunter's Tongue and making this happen because without you guys, we, we wouldn't have this experience. So as much as the hosts and their password summon phantoms may, may get some hate from time to time from this community, I think overall, you know, you're, you're doing a really good and noble thing, and, and I at least appreciate you for it. Here we've got one where the host was just kind of hanging out. He was letting his phantom take on the other invader, and he wasn't paying much attention. And so when I arrive, it's a it's a pretty quick victory, and um, yeah, having a lot of fun with this character. Carrie and Gary is somebody that I initially created to do a Taunter's Tongue run. Um, this was back before. <laughs> let me let me sit you all down and tell you a little bit of a, a time before the 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 era that we have now. There was a there was a time where you would set down your invasion sign and you only invaded in the area that you were at. You know, it was you had to you had to go find invasions. There was a there was a you could press the L1 button when you were looking at your map so that you could see where the multiplayer activity was happening and you could use that to to help you figure out where would be a good place to invade. How crazy. I know, right? It's like it's like learning about a landline house phone for the first time. Like, if you've never seen it before, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to you. But that's how it was. So, during that time, it was, people were talking about, oh, Elden Ring's dead, PvP's dead, can't get invasions anywhere. So I was like, no, you know what, I'm gonna be the change that I want to see in the world. And I went and I created Carrie and Gary. And I started doing a Taunter's Tongue run so that I could summon phantoms into my world and I could get invaders to, to have invasions. And I would use the, the, the ring to summon hunters. I was doing what I could to help 
um, in my own small way, help revitalize the, the online experience before they made the adjustment to remove the boundaries of invasions. And so Carrie and Gary is, um, it's really fitting that the, the video that I get to make for Carrie and Gary ended up being one that's kind of really dealing with Tantra's tongue invasions. Here we have our co-invader, he shows up, he's right there on that cliff edge. And right, right when he sees me, he switches to his jar can and absolutely loves seeing that from a fellow invader. And I had to quickly um, toggle my, my furled finger trick mirror so that I could let him know, hey man, same team, we're both red. Um, I'm red at heart, I just like to, to look like I'm not. Now I learned something in this invasion earlier there. I came out here and his little friend was hiding in the corner. So I know, hey, that guy's gonna come from that corner and I'm able to go and apply the pressure that's needed so that we don't get ambushed by this, this phantom. And I was pretty, um, I was pretty happy with how that worked out for me because you can see now he's kind of panic rolling. He's trying to figure out what he's gonna do next. And then I think it was a little bit of a tea bag there. Not sure what he was thinking, but hey, to each their own, right? We don't judge here on this channel. Perry, critical. You know how it goes. And then, oh, look at that. Nice timing. My co-invader gets a little cheeky backstab on the host. Absolutely love to see that. So again, just awesome invasions. I respect you hosts who are using the Taunter's Tongue to have these awesome fights. Hopefully if you're an invader, you could take away a little something from this video and maybe some tips for being a good co-invader or just having some fun in general. Here's going to be a little bit of the build. We'll go over the numbers for you. Like I mentioned, this is a uh, intelligence build. So again, level 88, I love this invasion range. We're using uh, plus 15 uh, normal weapons and we have plus 16, or sorry, not 16, plus six on the somber weapons. Um, you can see some of the spells that I'm using there. Rocking the Lucerne. I'm also using this crown that gives me two points of endurance and two points of intelligence, but it takes away, I think it takes away two points of your mind. So I have 20 mind with this character, where I, so I should have 121 FP, and this reduces me down to 110, which is like what your FP would be at if you were a level 18 mind. And so I think that's how that works, but it's worth it. I like the fashion. Um, I've also got the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. That was something that I got invading early on with this character, and so I just kind of like to use it. It's a lot of fun, and it helps me with some tankiness, but... This has been Carrie and Gary. I am and always will be Coobs. Peace and love, gamers.